time is it, Abel? 4.30. Well, I think I played with this guy long enough. No. No, not this time. Bet the water. Big man is going down for good. Who says no? That should keep the wolves at bay. How are you holding up? Never better. Is the team ready? Like always. Oh, How important is she? Run, lads, run! Yeah. More tea, Mrs. Dennison. No, thank you. Well, I'm sure he'll be right along. She means business. Step up. Oh, whoa there. Oh. Sibling, all right. She's been waiting, but I believe I kept her suitably entertained. At least I hope so. Good. We must keep up appearances. What's she like? Uh, she's very nice. I do so enjoy playing hostess for your uncle. After we're married, After I. After we're married, Uncle Jonathan can find his own hostess. <laughs> Come on. This is Denison. Profound apologies. Mr. Brock? You've been hurt? Oh, it was uh, nothing. I was just racing back from a lecture at the Anthropological Society. I'm doing some fundraising for a scientific expedition to the Dutch East Indies. Adding to your collection? Well, most of these things were my father's. This was your father's house, I believe. It was. He was a rather famous man, a companion to Mr. Darwin in the Galapagos. Some say you followed in his footsteps. <laughs> More like his shadow it is. Mr. Brock, I think you're too modest. My husband was very impressed with your work. I believe you met him up in Fort Vancouver a few years ago, after the war. Edward Dennison? Your husband? I didn't realize. There are a few years between us. I don't recall meeting you then. No, I was set to join him when my father died quite suddenly in Sacramento. As his only heir, I was forced to take over the family's mining operation. My father is Robert McCara. Yes, I know. Another man with a large shadow. Your husband didn't mention the connection. No, he wouldn't have. Edward is very sensitive about his position. He's a man of considerable accomplishments, yet, in some people's eyes, being married to an heiress, well, you know, was never that way at all, of course. You know, Edward, he showed me a wonderfully preserved fossil of the genus Terictus and a fish of the Devonian age, a, a genuine treasure, found quite inexplicably in Russian territory, Alaska. That's American territory now. Seward's folly. Actually, I think it was a very good purchase. Indeed. As I recall, Edward had gotten that fossil from a prospector who had told him a tale about an abandoned mine with a hidden passage, an opening into the earth, into the center of the earth, no less. I imagine it was just a local legend, you know, one of those stories that every culture seems to produce, like Noah's flood. Mr. Brock, Edward disappeared looking for that passage. I want you to help me find him.
Would you care to see the garden? That would be lovely. Please. I've collected some of his papers. Mrs. Dennison. Hopefully you'll be able to make sense of them. The mine is located at a lake at the base of a dormant volcano. There's a crude map. Mrs. Dennison, with all due respect, I am not a detective. I'm not looking for a detective, Mr. Brock. I'm looking for a man who can put himself in Edward's place. An adventurer who can think, strategize, and execute a plan as he would. A man who can discover and follow the trail he would have taken. I am highly flattered, but I am a scientist. Let me be blunt. I have a great deal of money. More than enough to finance any number of expeditions to whatever godforsaken place you choose to go. Do you really think you can make it to the East Indies based on the strength of your prize fighting skills? Of course, I had you investigated. I need you to lead this expedition. And given the state of financial affairs your father left you, I would have thought you'd jump at the opportunity. I see you are a woman who is accustomed to getting what she wants. I am. In any case, I will need to know your intentions within the next 24 hours. As you'll see, when you peruse these papers, there's a very important time constraint. I'll be awaiting your decision. Good day, Mr. Brock. Good day to you, Mrs. Dennison. Uncle Jonathan! What happened? Oh, she wants me to go on a wild goose chase to Alaska. I'd be glad to accompany you, Uncle. I, I mean, I would be useful in so many ways. Abel, our wedding! Well, we haven't really set a date yet. Of course we have. Well, we can change it. Emily, just think. If I'm to make my way as a journalist, I need to have life experience. Real life. We've talked about it. I mean, this, this could be my opportunity. Uncle, I would make a record of your entire journey. If you don't want to marry me, say so. I do. I do want to marry you. You know that. I knew you were going to do this. I told my sister. I just knew it. Wait, wait. Emily, wait! Emily! What do I do? Abel, I suggest you tell her you're going to dedicate the journal to her. <laughs> so we're going? Men get far too few opportunities for great adventure, Abel. You never know. It just could be true. I'm going to go tell her the good news. You never know. Dear Emily, as a wise man once said, being on a ship is like being in prison with a chance of drowning. Happily, after two weeks at sea, that part of our adventure is over. As I'm afraid, I have suffered from seasickness whilst Mrs. Dennison and Uncle Jonathan remained remarkably robust. Hey, well, have a drink. In any case, we have arrived safely in Alaska. Mrs. Dennison? And our journey begins. Bring the gear. Jonathan Brock, I presume. Indeed. Welcome to the capital of Alaska. I'm the customs officer, Solomon Smith. I received your letter. Good, good. I'd like to introduce you to Mrs. Martha Dennison and my nephew, Abel. Mrs. Dennison. Abel. What sort of accommodation do you have for us, Mr. Smith? I'd be pleased to show you. Abel, stay close. Are you the 
only American official here, Mr. Smith? I'm the only American official in the entire territory, Mrs. Denison. Goodness. Did you hear that, Mr. Brock? Mr. Smith is a very important man indeed. Mm -hmm. We know my husband came here. Someone must have had contact. Well, as I say, Mrs. Dennison, the Russians left no records. They took everything with them, lock, stock, and barrel. Well, perhaps the indigenous population remember him. Tlingit. They're the locals. The Russians treated them badly, so they don't trust us. They've yet to realize that we are a different people. Still, someone must remember him. Someone. Four years is a long time. This is the Wild West. People come and go looking to stake a claim. What about the map? The mine? Someone must know something. Not if it's a Russian mine. I'm gonna go check on Abel. I wish I could be of more comfort. Abel? Uncle! Uncle over here! Abel! Are you all right? He took my wallet. Stay with Mrs. Dennison. And he's got all of our money. Easy, friend. This man is thief. He's taken something from you. Yeah, as a matter of fact, he has. It's all our money. Thank you. He does this. You wish to kill him? Um, no. Uh, I don't feel like killing anyone tonight. Your choice. Sergei Sergeyevich Petkov. Jonathan Brock. I know who you are. It was fortunate with me. Nah, fortunate for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know who I am. Nah. You are um, with this rich woman. Hmm? You are looking for a man? Actually, it's her husband. I know. You know what? I know this man. I am here before. You know Edward Dennison? Mikhail, my brother, was with him. Mikhail, your brother? He went on the expedition with Dennison. He's not brother. He, he's like brother. We escaped Tsar's prison. Come to Alaska. It's many years now. 
Mr. Petkoff. Sergey. Uh, Sergey, uh, can you come to Sitka with me and speak with Mrs. Dennison? <laughs> oh, no, this is not possible for the moment. Uh, why? The American customs man thinks because I'm Russian, I must be spy or something like this. It's not true, but I don't stay in Sitka. I'm living there. Cigar? Oh, no, thank you. Your choice. Thank you. Dada. Are you sure you can trust this man? No, but he saved my life. Sergey, I brought Mrs. Dennison. Welcome, Mrs. Thank you. Inside. You bring with you other clothing. Yes, I grew up in a mining camp. I know what's required. I believe you. Sit, please. Thanks, Mrs. Do you know where my husband is? Do you know this place? This is mine for gold. I have never been. There's supposed to be a passage, Sergey, within the mine, a fault line of sorts that goes into the earth. That I, re I remember this. Your brother went there with my husband. He goes, but he never come back. I look. With this, I find him. How long will it take us to get there? Slowest problem. According to Edward's notes, the mine is visible only one day a year when the sun reveals it. September 23rd, the autumn equinox. That's 10 days from today. This mine can be seen one day only. Can we make it? 10 days. Yadin, ba, ba, tri, chatire, piat. Yes, same vosem devet. Maybe, maybe just. Maybe just is all I need. pushing deeper into the wilderness with no trails and no signposts to tell us where we are or how far we've come. The vistas are breathtaking, though they conceal a thousand perils we sense but have yet to see. Each day, we travel farther, faster, living off the land, stretching ourselves to the limit.
Sergey is an excellent guide, but he and Uncle Jonathan are dependent on a crudely marked map bearing only the sketchiest of details. Mountain lions, wolves, bears, and other predators snarling and howling in the night keep us vigilant and wary at all times. So as you might guess, I'm having the time of my life. We shoot from here. Yeah. There. There, see? Ready? Go. <laughs> Good one. Good shot. Spasibo. Why do men get to have all the fun in life? Such as? Fishing, shooting guns. I thought you grew up in a mining camp. My father was very protective of me. He was determined to raise a young lady no matter what the environment, so. Any man that would have tried to teach me how to shoot a gun would have been ridden out of the camp on a rail. I teach. I'll show you. Wait, hold, hold on, sir. Guns are not playthings. I'm well aware of that, Mr. Brock. Now hold it like so, strong into shoulder. Hmm? Like this? Yeah. OK, you got to be careful. <laughs> oh, recoil. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Try again. Mrs. Dennison seems at ease among men. Not so surprising, given her background. I know her journey is to find her husband, but I'm not quite sure everyone will be happy if we actually do. We should take this ridge. Yeah, but we have to cross a swamp to get there. Too long, too slow. What, what else can we do? We have to go this way. I think it's better we go over the mountain. Look. OK, what's right below us? Can we, what, what is right below us? Uncle Jonathan and Sergey debate constantly about the quickest route through the mountains, but it is all for the common goal. Yeah. Let me see. Would you like some coffee? Oh, please. Sergey, here, look. Good? OK. We're within striking distance. I hope so. Tomorrow, September 23rd, the autumn equinox. The sun is at high noon. We'll be there. It's a bear. The horses. Uncle, I'll, I'll go with you. No, Abel, stay with Mrs. Dennison. No, 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 no. You have to stay. We've lost two of the horses. Without those horses, what will we do, Mr. Brock? The only thing we can, chase the sun. To be so close to our goal and to lose two horses has been a blow. But we are resolute. 
The cratered mountain is ahead of us, and we are determined to reach it by noon. We have not traveled this far to fail on the final day. It's there. You can see it plain and clear. Just like on the map. The trinket name is Hill Who Smoke. Well, it's not smoking now. Thank God. There's a bit of steam rising from the lake. It must be an active geothermal area. The Indians say devil is in lake. Sometimes suck people down, sometimes spit them up. A Saxonuson vortex. It was mentioned in Edward's papers. What is it? Well, in theory, a Saxonuson vortex is a kind of reverse whirlpool, which allows a lake to draw water from a source underneath the Earth. Rather than being fed by rivers or rainfall or other mundane sources, it's a complete fantasy, I'm afraid. You seem very sure of that, Mr. Brock. I am, Mrs. Dennison. Your uncle seems very... Opinionated? I was thinking pig-headed. One minute till high noon. But if we don't have the sun... We must be ready if we do. Sergey, please. We do what with this? I'm not sure yet. Find the compass. It's almost time. seconds, Uncle. Look! The sun is coming! It's gone. Oh, yes, it is, but, but not really. Abel, get my plumb line. What are you doing? I'm showing where the ray of light would have pointed. Quickly, tie it here. Good. Okay, now pull it taut. Nice. Hold it steady. Directly into the middle of lake. And it could be fathoms deep out there. And we could never find the entrance underwater. Mrs. Dennison, do you have a mirror? A rather small one? Small will look fine. Thank you. You see, the sun would have hit the surface of the lake on an angle. It will hold it steady. There. Good. And on a clear day, the surface would have acted as a mirror, reflecting the ray of light directly towards... Sergey, blow some smoke towards the mirror. would have struck at a point halfway down that steep hill. Let's go find our mine. <laughs> we need to find the downward passage, if there is one. There must be miles of tunnels here. And we'll search every foot of it if need be. <laughs> OK, we need light now. Okay. Stay close, Abel. Abel, keep up. Coming. Hey, 
table. Which way? It's a coin toss. Really? Uh, no, of course not. Uh, it's, it's more like 50-50. Well, we're gonna have to split up. Why don't we each take a tunnel? I'd prefer not to. Uh, Mrs. Dennison, I understand that, but it's the most practical course of action given the time we have remaining, which is not very much. Uncle, look here. Someone did this with a pick. A marker of sorts? Would your husband know to do this? Yet, uh, Mikhail, Mikhail did this. It's this Russian symbol. It, it means don't go this way. Hello, the Russian. Mr. Brock, can I have a word with you? Of course. Has Sergei said anything about my husband? In what regard? Anything. I tried to talk to him about Edward, but he was evasive. I don't think he liked him very much. Not sure you did either. It's not true. We had much in common, your husband and I. I found his ideas original and provocative. I just wish I'd gotten to know him better. Me too. We were only together as husband and wife for a year. Forgive me for being so forward, but I find the two of you a peculiar couple. I'd never met a man like Edward before. He was so worldly, so confident, so full of life, and full of plans that I thought were exciting and adventures that I thought we'd share together. Why didn't you? Perhaps he didn't think his adventures were for sharing. One day he was simply gone. I didn't know exactly where. He'd kept certain aspects of his expedition secret even from me. It took four years just to piece together the scraps of evidence that I showed you. If he left you, why? I just want to know what happened to him. I need to know that. Fair enough. Mr. Brock, you find opening. Come, come see. Well, it seems to be going straight down. Let's descend. Sent into the earth. Uncle Jonathan, our point man, going first, picking the route, and then lowering us downward. It is difficult to express our emotions, for it is both exciting and utterly terrifying. Truly a journey into the unknown. Our ropes are 200 feet in length, so we must find ledges and outcroppings in the rock walls and conduct our descent in stages. As you may recall, I have had some fear of heights in the past, but there is no time for fear now. I must push past it and think of only what awaits us below.
table, slower! Vertical descent is behind us. We are now traversing a series of tunnels and passages, some of them vast galleries carved out of the rock by the primeval forces that shaped our planet, taking us deeper and deeper into the earth. Presumably, we are following Mr. Dennison and Mikhail's route. But this, of course, we cannot know for certain. The only thing we do know for certain is that it is too late to turn back now. Do you think it's Edwards? Let's keep searching. They brought more oil, I think. Ah, it's got a gaseous odor. It most likely combustible, sir. Oh, he's weak. Yeah. Was Mr. Dennison? I don't know. Oh, God, yet. How can you be sure, Sergey? We make this in prison camp in Siberia. Mikhail and me. Brothers. strange sounds here, none of them being the wind. No, it's quite strong. Uncle? Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Abel! Abel! Abel, where are you? I'm down here. What are you doing down there? I fell. Are you all right? 
Yeah, I think so. Stay there, we'll be right down. Watch out! Are you all right? The pack saved my life. Incredible. Yeah. Look, there's light. Come on. Back on the surface. How could we? It couldn't be. We're not. I don't understand. Neither do I. There is no gaseous ball providing illumination. The, the light, it must be an electrical phenomenon, much like a aurora borealis, only stable. So there would be no night. Correct. The light must always be on. Otherwise, the physical laws seem to apply. There's gravity, condensation, hence the clouds. There must be rainfall. There is a tide. Is it salty? Nah, somewhat. I'm gonna explore some more. I'm coming with you. I'm coming too. Yeah. Bring guns. discovered down here is truly amazing. Trees are like we know. We have fir, pine. But plants need sunlight. Yeah, they've somehow adapted. Photosynthesis without the sun. Evolution in an enclosed environment taking a course of its own. It's warm. Would you gentlemen mind giving me a little privacy? Why? Sergey. Ah, uh, naturally. We'll just keep going. Look at this. What can do this? Not evolution. These trees were felled with an axe. For what? Once or twice. 
Did you see this thing? What was it? No, I just felt it slithering under the water. It must have been 20 feet long. We have a pretty good welt, but it didn't break the skin. Thank you, Mr. Brock. Well, we found some trees that had been cut down by an axe. By Edward? Perhaps. We think the trees were used for a raft. A raft? To go where? Our raft we owe to Edward Dennison. He cut more trees than he needed. We lashed the logs together with our climbing ropes, and thus far she is seaworthy. The sea, however, is more of a lake despite its salt content. Its extent is unknown, but from our soundings, it's rather deep. 75 feet! Hey, Sergey, let's drop the sail. I think we'll make better time with just the current. It's getting deeper. Look. Look there. Bert. Oh, no, not birds. There's a theory that birds are the descendants of winged dinosaurs. It seems to be true. What are they doing? They attack, maybe. Sergey, no, they're just curious. Don't shoot. Uncle, there's something pulling on my rope. Martha. Help me. Oh, it's heavy. Help me, come on. Hold it up. <laughs> ah, it's a bit clean through. And it's taking your pickaxe. This is why they circle. They wait for dinner. That one's not circling. Oh, shoot it! creatures that's ever lived. We must kill it! Bullets will be useless. Hold on! It's hungry. Let's feed it. <laughs> now what? We raise the sail, Abel and hope for a strong wind. Sail coming up!
That creature was prehistoric. Yeah, from the Pleistocene era. But those reptilian birds, they're from somewhat later. You're talking over a million years ago. It seems that the creatures that died out on the surface of the Earth survived here, protected from the last ice age. Could you imagine those creatures in San Francisco Bay? Your quick thinking saved us, Mr. Brock. It's true. Let's hope our good fortune continues. Well, I believe it does. Take a look. A raft. It's a raft. It's been here for years. It looks like the elements could have destroyed it. Where's the rest of it? Don't jump to conclusions, Martha. I think I'm gonna go explore a bit. Don't go too far, Abel. Why does she want this man? He was at Sitka many weeks, but never spoke of him. A woman's heart is the last frontier. I did not trust him. Is this why you didn't join his expedition? Maybe. I was so drunk I could not go. But perhaps this was on purpose. I tried to stop Mikhail. I saw two girls. Where? There's a trail. Lead the way. We are being watched. Yeah, some of those songbirds aren't birds. Who could they be? I think we're going to find out. Get across. That's how. Something tells me this is not primitive. He was built with knowledge and engineering and a great deal of skill. Do you think it's safe? There's one way to find out. Be careful. Not afraid of heights. This is incredible, Uncle. Jonathan, we've got company. This is unfortunate.
What do you think they're saying? It sounds vaguely familiar. I hear many words. It's like clinging. Martha. And Jonathan Brock. You must bow to me. Edward. Mr. Brock is an anthropologist. He knows how it works. There are protocols. Have you brought anything to give me? To give you? A gift, a sign of respect. We have our packs. Good. You have weapons? Yes. Excellent. Now we will celebrate. These people came down from the surface centuries ago and found an Eden. Naturally, their creation myth involves the world above, from which a messiah prophesized to descend. Sounds familiar. Hmm. As it turns out, I was the fulfillment of that prophecy. So you're like a god? Essentially. Who do they think we are? They're waiting to be told. You're a problem I didn't anticipate. Who's she? She's my people's priestess. They're hunters. But some of the animal species in this place are murderous beasts. We encountered one of them. Every time a hunting party would go out, men were killed or maimed. I taught them how to hunt from above, from aerial platforms. I've heard something of that. Certain South American tribes employ the same technique. Indeed, Mr. Brock, I did not invent the idea. I adapted it to this environment, and it has transformed their lives. We found Mikhail. Stupid man and his damn cigars. He set off an explosion, as you must have guessed. Mind your manners when you talk to me. My people are easily offended. You called this place Eden, Edward? You've been here four years now. Is it really Eden to you? It is, Martha. I intended to stay that way, too. Mr. Brock, I haven't thanked you for taking such good care of my precious wife. Martha? She does not like us. You've done it, Uncle Jonathan. 
This discovery will put you on the map. You may have even eclipsed Darwin, let alone your father. Yeah, I've done it all right. Why have you stayed here? Is the power so intoxicating? Maybe not to you, but to someone who's never had it. Yes. I heard there were strangers, but I never imagined you. And Jonathan Brock, you paid top dollar. Who's running the Empire while you're away? You left me without a word. Without your permission, you mean? Is that how you saw it? That's how it was. Not to me. I didn't want to do this. I have thought about this moment so many times. I thought I would know exactly what to say to you. I thought you would be. What? Pleased to see me. I thought about it too. Knowing it would never happen. And I am pleased. But I'm not the man you knew, Martha. You can stay here with me. We can still be together. I'm not ready for this. I'm sorry. I see. No, I don't think that you do see. You have no idea how hurt I was, how I felt. Where are you going? To your priestess? As a matter of fact, I am. Shoot them if you have to. You fool! 
He's only a boy. He's older than he looks. I know him. Now what? He's a traitor. I'm going to kill him. Edward, don't! <laughs> Are you insane? Just give me one reason, Mr. Brock. Just one. Shit! Now, for you. You have no idea what you've done. Requiem Eterno Deo. Rest in peace, fallen god. Gods don't bleed. You killed that boy in cold blood. I had to. They would have tried to kill me. Who were they? Traitors. Their leader is Joaquinta. He resisted me from the start even when he saw what I could do for the people. He sowed dissension. I banished him and his followers. He started a campaign of harassment. I attacked, took prisoners. Prisoners? Your arrival has given him the moment he's been waiting for. What do you mean? Your appearance has undercut my power. You sealed your fate when you killed that boy, Edward. And you, Martha, you were horrified by my actions out there. Consider what happens next. What? Joaquinta and all of his men must be annihilated. my mind, any man who found himself in your husband's position would be changed by it. He isn't changed. He's worse, not different. The arrogance, sense of entitlement, that's how he was when I met him. It was his trump card. My father scared off so many of my suitors. He couldn't frighten Edward. I think that's what drew me to him in the first place. It wasn't love. I think I wanted him to love me. Maybe he did for a little while. Losing control. They're going. All of them. He is false god. They see it. Will our raft be where we left it? Your raft was destroyed. Why? So you couldn't get back. There's another way, though, through the Valley of the Light. 
was the route they took down from the surface centuries ago. Edward, are you sure it's still there? Well, we'll find out, Mr. Brock. Is that them? We'll use this? If I have to. Yeah, it's them. Sergey, it's loaded. Let's go. No, he wants a reckoning. Can we escape using those hunting lines you built? Maybe. Maybe is good enough. OK, let's go. Real tight. Let's get shot. Wheel. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. This way. They're right behind us. Are you okay, Mars? It got caught on my strap. It scared me more than anything. We need to go. I have dynamite. It will hold them back. How many of those do you have? This is the last one. But they know what it can do. Come on, Sergei.
careful. You're blocking the passage to the cave. How far will he go to stop us? What do you think, Brock? Okay. Follow me. This is our only chance. Edward, once we're in the cave, we'll be sitting ducks if there's no way out. I have a plan. Mr. Brock, get my wife safely in the cave. Martha. Sergey. Cover me. The blast should loosen the rock, sealing us in. And them out. Edward. Move back as far as you can into the cave. You should find an underground river. Now! Edward, what about you? Don't worry about me. I'm a god here, remember? Joaquinta! You think you have the power? I show you the power of life! What are you doing? Saving your life!
Thank you. I suppose you're already thinking about the East Indies? Uh, I can't say as I am. Really? I am. After what we've been through, the idea of going back to more board meetings and society brunches seems too dreary to contemplate. The Indies, on the other hand. Much, much more exciting. I agree completely. Good. Then we have a deal. It would be a pleasure. Uncle? About my journal, should we let the world know where we've been? Yet. You have the most at stake? My scholarly renown. It's the type of discovery that walks a man out of the shadows. We need not destroy their world. We must keep their secret. Always. You have your answer, Abel. Well... I'll, uh, make sure I deal with this. As if this is the last entry in the journal, I feel I must confess something which I'm sure you've already guessed. It has all been a work of imagination. Clearly nothing I've described here could ever have taken place. After all, a journey to the center of the earth? Who in their right mind would believe it? <laughs> <laughs>